Dive into the futures markets through the charts, and after last week's big moves in the currency markets, we're taking a closer look at the euro against the dollar. Here's a five-day chart of the dollar, the euro against the dollar, and look at that nosedive when the ECB was a bit more dovish than expected. In fact, at one point last week, the euro was on pace for its worst week of the year. But the question here is, was technical damage done on last week's selling action. So let's take a look at this longer term chart here in the Bloomberg. And you can view this two year chart of the euro against the dollar using the GTV function. And we see a beautiful uptrend from December of 2016 all the way until April of this year. And then a bit of a reversal here as that uptrend has started to drop. This area in orange represents that drop from last week. It may suggest that a big move to the upside could happen if there's a bit of a reversal here. But the more likely outcome is that sort of a bearish continuation pattern, and we could see a quick drop down to 110 or so, maybe even lower. So to talk more about what's possibly ahead for the euro against the dollar, I'd like to bring in Pat Nipper of Renaissance Macro. Thanks so much for taking the time. And from a more macro standpoint, what do you think about what's happening uh, in Europe right now? We had the DAX down today. This action with the euro. From a macro standpoint, we're starting to see where Europe growth is slowing a little bit. You had eurozone industrial production is starting to weaken on a year-over-year basis. Still positive, but it's not as strong as it was. Now that doesn't actually translate to directly to the equity markets, but what it does give us is it gives us a signal that growth differentials may starting may be starting to widen between Europe and the U.S. Well, speaking of widening, we have a great chart here that shows that there is a huge uh, spread widening between uh, the 10-year yield and the Bund. Let's take a look at this chart in the Bloomberg, and you could talk to us about really what it means here. Sure. So in the blue line, we have the U.S. 10-year yield. And this, goes, this starts in 2008. It goes back to 2008, and the white line is the German Bund. And they parallel pretty closely for quite some time. Then you started to see a divergence here right around 2013. And it continued to widen. That spread has widened pretty consistently over the past couple of years to where we are now. This is about the widest that this spread has been in really about 10 years or so. And what that means is that interest rates are more attractive in the United States than they are in Europe. So where is capital going to go? Capital is going to flow into the U.S. And if capital is flowing into the U.S., that's good for the dollar. Hmm, very, very interesting. So it sounds as though you would. So how does this? Uh, hi, Mike. So how's this going to relate to cryptocurrency? Um, well, as you can tell, the dollar has been on a weak trend, but because obviously the yields are going to be higher for the U.S. dollar, it does seem like there's a lot more upside. Um, when it relates to the cryptocurrency market, it does. We would need both currencies to be starting to weaken even more, both the European uh, euro and the uh, U.S. dollar. And um, it's not going to be seen right now. Um, a lot of people have been talking about inflation because the central bankers have been printing money, but it's not going to really affect us until there's an actual credit crunch because. Uh, they've been able to prevent inflation really becoming an issue because uh, a lot of this money that's printed out is basically redistributed into stock buybacks and com companies are using this leverage to continue to buy other uh, companies. And um, as long as they keep wages low, which they've been doing pretty well, um, you're not going to see crazy inflation. And obviously wages have been stagnant for 20, 30 years. Um, but like I said, once there is an actual credit crunch and uh, this U.S. world bull market uh, that's been going on since the last financial collapse in 2008, when we do see some sort of issue, I do see that there will be a crash. And when the crash does happen, I do believe that cryptocurrencies and not just cryptocurrencies, any kind of commodity, so oil, uh, which has been doing very well, um, precious metals, which has been very stagnant and has not been a great investment for, since 2012, but that all could change. So let me know what you guys think about this, and I will talk to you guys soon.